Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. In today's episode we're gonna assign a new variable to our stars grid, namely the discovered or undiscovered variable, but what we are mainly gonna focus on is actually displaying the stars as undiscovered. So let me quickly show you that if we go to new game you can see all of these dots and if we hover over them the star is unknown. Currently the unlocking mechanism is just bound to a mouse click, so if I click this guy then the name will appear permanently and the star's color is revealed, uh, amongst other stats that we're gonna implement later on. However, that is not everything, we're also gonna make it so the stars automatically get updated. So this is going to be a game that permanently saves everything that is important. We will see how that works out. Now, however, if I close the game completely and load it up newly, we can actually load this save status. Uh, watch the previous few episodes if you don't know what this is all about. We can click the continue button and you can see the stars that we uncovered are still uncovered. So first things first, let's have a look into the star grids. I'm just going to show you the additions that I made right here. So for instance, you can see I added this variable right here, the discovered variable, which goes into the grid row, no, column five. And I basically only had to add it right here. So at the discovered status right here, I'm actually going to link this script in the description uh, amongst the script we're gonna write today. So I added it right here with the star index and I set it to false. So zero represents false. At the beginning, no star is discovered. And I had to do the same thing, I don't know, probably in the create stars script. Let's actually check that out. Did I do something here? Yeah, I had to uh, transfer the discovered status here as well. So there we go. I will provide the create star script, the star grid script and the script we're gonna write today. The script we're gonna tend to today is the stars draw. So let's open that up. So previously this script had something in it, but I decided to completely revamp it. Currently we only have the draw self function in there because it's on the draw event of the stars. So let's go ahead and do something with it, I guess. Um, let's do the user interaction, meaning that if we hover over something, then something should happen. So to do that, we simply say if the mouse X position is bigger than X and the mouse X position is at the same time smaller than X plus sprite width, there we go. And also if the mouse Y is bigger than Y and the mouse Y is smaller than Y plus sprite height. There we go. So basically if we hover over the freaking thing. Now somewhere along the lines I made a mistake. What? I don't understand. It says it is expecting a, a bracket. Ah, we're missing an and here. Oh my gosh. Anyways, let's continue. We are gonna do the discovered uh, pop-up, I guess. So that is the thing we are not gonna implement just yet. We're just gonna prepare it. We're gonna say if self-discovered, which is a variable we assign to each star, discover it, yes, uh, if that is true, then we want to do something which is going to be to, I guess, display the window or the star properties. Something along these lines. However, if self-discovered is false, so else, we want to do something else, which is to display uh, the grayed out text, unknown text, you know. So we're gonna say draw set color and we're gonna set that equal to C white. Yeah, I think that is good. And draw set H align, which is basically gonna align the text to the center so we don't have to do that ourselves. And also draw text transformed. So that is something similar to what we had previously, but we're gonna say X plus sprite width divided by two. So it's gonna be in the exact center of the sprite. And since we centered the text, the text is always gonna be centered in relation to the star. So if that is the case and Y plus sprite height, we want to display it below the star. Maybe we can even add an extra pixel to give us some more space. And uh, we want to display, in case uh, the discovered status is false, then we want to display, for instance, unknown. 
Uh, we want to leave a space here and quotes plus string self dot star name, right? And we want to, hmm, let's see, I have to expand this slightly. What we want to do is add a scaling of about 0.8, at least with our current fonts, with the standard fonts. Good. And what did I do here? Transformed. There we go. Oh man, more stuff is wrong. Yeah, we need more brackets. No. Gosh, I'm making a lot of mistakes today. Ah, I forgot the angle. The angle, of course, should be zero. There we go. Okay. Okay, next up, we want to add a temporary section, kind of adding the ability to unlock these stars. So we're gonna call this click action for the time being. And you know, later on, we need to actually move a spaceship over there in order to discover and explore the star. However, for now, it's just gonna do a mouse check button released, something like that. And it's gonna be the mouse button left. There we go. We are going to do... Let's make a title here. This is a temp dev tool. So if we click the star, we want to set self discovered to be equal to true. And this will reveal the color of the star. However, we now have to immediately save this new status into our grid that is locally saved in a file. And therefore, I'm gonna call this load grid for the time being, and then we're gonna say star grid equals ds grid create obj core dot star variables, which is a variable I assigned to my core object. So instead of a global dot star variables, it's now the object core variable. You can check the other scripts in the description. Wow, that was hard to say. Anyways, let's write this correctly. So we have the width of the grid already and the height of the grid, of course, is uh, global or obj underscore core dot stars amount, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. So I really hope you remember these variables from previous episodes, but this is basically how many values, different properties do we have in our stars, currently six with the newly discovered variable. And this is how many stars do we currently have, which is something the player can set later on. At the moment, it's 60 stars. Good. Now that we created the star grid, it's time to open up the any file again. And we named the any file star underscore grid dot any, if you remember. So what we want to do, of course, is read the grid that we have saved in there when pressing new game. And we want to load this grid up. Therefore, we have to say a uh, star grid is the ID. And then the string we want to load is uh, any underscore read string, something like that. And we want to name the section, which I called star grid. And I called the key simply grid. And then the default value should be empty. We did this also in one of the previous episodes. After that, we can simply close off the any file like so. Good. Now that we have loaded up the grid and it is populated with the same uh, values that we had before, we want to replace certain values. So we're going to do ds underscore grid set and we want to set something in the star grid, namely in the uh, column obj core discovered. So I made all of these variables actually global for the time being. Maybe I will have to change them into, for instance, star discovered because there are also going to be planets, etc. Uh, we shall see. We shall see how that works out. Next up, we want to say self star index. Uh, that is the index I saved. So I saved all of the star numbers. If it is the seventh star or the 16th, they all have this number saved in a variable called star self star index and then the value is going to be set to one because of course we want to set the discovered status to one as soon as we click it great last but not least we need to unload the grid because now we have replaced the values we need to kind of save it again so we say any open star grid dot any and then we want to any write string this time uh, in the star grid section and also the grid key and then ds grid write the star grid something like that that should work out 
great. Uh, not forget any clothes, I guess, something like that. And then we should also uh, delete the grid again. Yeah, that is something that we should do. Um, we can do it in this section. I mean, it's called unload. So that is DS grid destroy, I think. And the star grid is the grid we want to destroy. It's the only thing that we have loaded, if I'm not mistaken. So there we go. Let's check this out. Did it work or did it not work? That is the question. I'm gonna say new game and oh, they have the wrong sprite at the moment. That is of course a problem. We need to set this to a different sprite. So if we have a look into my sprites, I actually added another sprite. So let's check this out. Image 10 is a grayed out star. So that is our undiscovered sprite. So I think we're gonna actually add this right here on the top since it is the draw event and this code is being executed all the time if the right conditions are true. We can simply say no no not that. We say discovered status. Something like that. We can say if self discovered equals true. Even though we already have that below. Oh well, let's just still do it. If self discovered equals true, then we want the image index to be equal to self dot image index, which is also a variable that I saved. So every star gets its image index saved. Now we're gonna say draw set color C white again, something along these lines. We want to probably also center it. So draw set H align F A center and then draw text transformed. There we go. X plus sprite width divide. It's basically the same thing as below. What am I doing? I should just pick this thing here and add it right there. Oh my gosh, I did a mistake. And there we go. This is too much here. Beautiful. Okay, I think we got this. Okay, we're also gonna add another condition right here. If it is not true, then we want the image index to be equal to obj core. And I think, yeah, we can just go with the star sprites total. And the reason this is actually working, our star sprites total are 10 currently, even though we now have 11 pictures in here. But of course, we are counting from image zero. So we have 10 stars, that is correct. But the image 10 is the grayed out star. So we can simply uh, take the uh, star sprites total, which is set to 10. Great. Okay, with that, it should now work, I think. So let's go ahead and hit the new game button. There we go. The stars are all grayed out. If I hover over them, we can see their randomly generated name. We can click on them in order to uncover their image index and also permanently enable them. And whenever we click on a star or discover it, it is automatically being saved into the any file. And therefore, I can restart the room, hit the continue button, and everything is still the same. And of course, we can uh, create a new game, and you can see everything is different again. Oh, I see a mistake! Oh, I see a mistake! Yeah, I want to fix that. Unknown. Of course, they are not unknown anymore. Why is this? Ah, because I copied it over. Of course, we only want to set self star name without the unknown. There we go. Let's check this out again. And now it's unknown, but not anymore. Beautiful. Okay, with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.